Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's so good to be able to come to you this way and to just to be able to share a word of hope, a word of encouragement in, in these times of trouble. Last time we were speaking from Psalm 34 and we read verses 1 through 3, and that was just a call to praise. And then today I wanted to pick up on that with verses 4 through 7. Uh, it's just going to talk about the experience of David after his call to praise. And um, I also just wanted to read the inscription again real, real briefly, um, because this is the context of, of what Psalm, one, or rather Psalm 34 is all about. Uh, it says that of, of David, it's a Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, or that was the king, a king of the Philistines, his name was Achish, but Abimelech was a title. When he changed his behavior before Abimelech, so that he, Abimelech, drove him out, and he went away. And we saw that David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. We saw that that was something that David did on a regular basis, because Ahimelech, the priest, when he was before Saul, said to him, was this the first time that David came to inquire of me? No, it wasn't. So this was something that was David's practice. And so because David was someone who practiced a calling on the Lord, who practiced praising the Lord continually in good times and in bad times. That's what we talked about. You know, we're, it seems that right now we might be going from, from trouble to trouble. David, in this context, had uh, found out from Jonathan, his dear friend, and the son of Saul, the king, that King Saul was trying to kill David. So David ran away to the Philistines, to King Achish, and then found out because of the song that they were singing about David, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands, referring to slaying the Philistines, that David went from the trouble from running from Saul right into the trouble of the king of the Philistines, who also would want to put David to death. And so that, that's where we pick up right here in verse 4. And this is what David says. He says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me. And what? and delivered me from all my fears. Verse 5, those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord, listen to this, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. And so, Father, we just want to thank you for this word, and we ask that you'll speak to our hearts again today. We give you thanks and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I've been out uh, the last several days and I've been uh, delivering baskets of food to families that need it. I've been delivering tulips to some of our senior members and just blessing families. And we were out delivering um, some Easter bunnies and uh, little bags with uh, things for the children to do. And, and, I've, and I've seen, you know, the, the faces of a lot of people. And one of the things that I see on, on faces, uh, not on every face, but on, on several faces, and as you're walking around, maybe you go to Walmart or you go out shopping somewhere and you look at, you look at faces, one thing that we've noticed is a lot of people just aren't, aren't looking you in the eye. And, 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 and when you do see people, oftentimes you might see fear in their eyes, fear on their faces. Why is this? Well. Because of the coronavirus, right? People are afraid of death. But listen to what it says here in, in Psalm uh, 34. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. You know, in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 2, it says this. It says, Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things. Jesus partook of flesh and blood. And that through death, Jesus died for us, we know that. And that through death, he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil. He destroyed the devil who has, what, the power of death. And deliver those, what, who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. You see, we're, we've been set free from that, brothers and sisters, as Followers of Jesus Christ, Jesus died for us that we might have eternal life and we do not need to fear death. You see, Psalm 1 
39 says, All the days ordained for me were written in his book before one of them came to be. You see, you will not die before your time. You are in the hands of God. He is watching over you. And when you seek him, it says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Now listen, let's go back to that inscription again. What does the inscription say? It says, of David, when he what? When he changed his behavior before Abimelech so that he drove him out and he went away. You see, Abimelech, if David didn't change his behavior, David would have been in trouble. But what did he do? He sought the Lord. And the Lord showed David, you need to change your behavior right now and it will save your life. And the Lord is saying to us, there are some things that we need to change that are going to save our lives. And we're doing these things. You see, God is watching over us. God is protecting him. And when you seek him, he says what? He, he will be found by you. He says, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart, and I will be found by you. That's in Jeremiah 29. David sought the Lord, and he answered him and delivered him from all of his fears, the fear of death, because, again, death was staring David in the face, but the Lord delivered him, and the Lord is going to deliver you. When you seek the Lord, when you cry out to him, he will speak to you, and you will be delivered, because he is watching over you. Listen to what it says then in verse 5. Those who look to him are radiant. In other words, their face is shining. It's like what it says about Moses, that his face shone and he covered it, you know, when he came out from the presence of God. When you seek the Lord, you've been in the presence of the Lord, your face will be radiant. It says, and their faces shall never be ashamed. Listen to what this says about Hannah in 1 Samuel. When she was crying out to the Lord, when she was seeking the Lord because of this cry in her heart to have a child and, and, and she was crying out to the Lord and then and, and the, the priest, the high priest Eli thought she was drunk and she says this no do not regard your servant as a worthless woman for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation then Eli answered go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him and she said let your servant find favor in your eyes. And listen to what it says. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her what? And her face was no longer sad. You see, when you seek the Lord and he speaks to you, and this is what he's saying to you right now, go in peace. Just as Eli said, go in peace. Be at peace right now. You see, God is watching over you. And, and, and when God watches over you, and when you have the peace of the Lord, guess what? You don't have to, your, 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 your face changes. Your face becomes radiant. Your face is no longer sad. Their faces shall never be, what, ashamed. You shall never be ashamed. The Lord Jesus is watching over you. Call upon him. Are you seeking the Lord? Are you seeking the Lord in this time? Then you have nothing to be afraid of. Are you seeking the Lord? Then you have nothing to be afraid of because God is watching over you. So let the appearance of your face be different. Don't be sad or show fear in your eyes or have fear. God is your protector. God is watching over you and your face shall never be ashamed and you, you will be radiant. And everyone will look to you and say, why do you, why do you not have this fear? Because you're trusting in the Lord. You're trusting in the Lord. And then it says, this poor man cried. See, every one of us is poor before the Lord. There's none of us who are rich before the Lord. And it says that even Jesus, although he was rich, he became poor for your sake and for my sake. This poor man, what, cried, and the Lord heard him. You've got, listen, you've got to understand and know that God hears you. The Lord heard him and what, and saved him out of all of his troubles. This is the experience of David, that as he sought the Lord again and again and again, God saved him again and again and again. Seek the Lord with all of your heart. And you have nothing to be afraid of. Now listen to this last verse. It says in verse 7, 
the angel of the Lord. And oftentimes, that's a reference even to Jesus. Uh, it could be simply an angel that the Lord has sent, or it could be Jesus himself. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Listen, don't be afraid of death. Really, don't be afraid of the coronavirus. You do not need to be afraid. The Lord is encamped around you. And if you fear him above these other things, and put, that means just to put your trust in him and to revere him and to know that he is watching over you. If you fear him, he will deliver you. The angel of the Lord encamps around those. That, that makes me think of, of 2 Kings chapter 6, you know, the story of Elisha when, when the king of, of Syria was coming to get him and the armies of Syria were surrounding him and his servant was afraid. And it says, when the servant of the man of God rose early in the morning and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was all around the city. And the servant said, alas, my master, what shall we do? Then Elisha prayed. Or rather than Elisha said, do not be afraid. Listen, this is the word of the Lord again to you. Do not be afraid. Does it seem as if there's something that's all around you that, you know, the coronavirus is all around? No, do not be afraid, he said. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, oh, Lord. Please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So, okay, the enemy was all around the city, but the mountains and the horses and the chariots of God were all around Elisha. Here it is, Psalm 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him. And what does he do? He delivers them. Psalm 125, verses 1 and 2 says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. It says, As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forevermore. Listen. The angel of the Lord is encamped around you. You have nothing to be afraid of. Let your face shine differently than others. Don't be filled with fear, but be filled with hope and joy and peace that comes from knowing that God is with you, that he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Instead, he encamps around you and he delivers you from all your fears. God bless you. Lord Jesus, continue to give us your peace in these troubled times, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.